So we're in the car. I have my dual screen set up here. I feel like my car is like Knight Rider with the two screens. And uh, we can take a look around. All, all good. And uh, here I am sitting. We are making the ultimate vanity mirror. We got lights, a very dusty mirror, and we are freeballing it with loose wires in the cigarette lighter. Raw, baby. That's how we're doing it. We got lights, LEDs. It's gonna go like this. It's really easy to hold a cell phone and install lighting. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, petrol heads and automotive enthusiasts. I'm Ken Bond. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at these two cars. Question number one, are these the same car or are they different? That is the question. And the answer is they are, well... An argument could be made that they are the same car or they're the different car because the silver one is a 428i and this white one is a 430i. But BMW just did a little name change uh, in the life cycle of these cars. I like these cars because they're pillarless coupes and you can see a before and after of what I've done. The silver car looked exactly like the white car when I first got it. And I've added a lot of graphics and stickers. I went this route because I like to drift and you can actually do a lot. I'm surprised. If you look at the back of this car, it's completely transformed. A lot of people can't even tell what I've done because I've tried to give it a stock look. I've stuck to the ethos of the car manufacturer and really just kind of kept pushing it and it didn't mess up the warranty it didn't screw anything up so it's a lot of fun i really i've really been impressed with what stickers can do to a car and i highly recommend them look at this stuff it's it's insane so ken what was the first thing you did to your car uh the first sticker was this sticker right here and this is a bmw part number or a bmw part it's just this this black sticker with the red outline it came in three pieces Put it on both sides and uh then i then i did this little uh red thing down here which is actually this is just red electrical tape electrical tape is really easy to work with and just the basic electrical tape has a nice it's a nice border and it, it, it matches these stripes which came later almost perfectly the other thing that i did was uh around the front I put a, these little red accents uh, on the on the front edges here. Just these little ones. Then um, you know they look they look amazing. Thank they you. match the car perfectly. Thank you. Uh, the and then if we go back to the back of the car, this pays tribute to the old BMWs. They often had black in between the tail lights. And I'll turn on the lights for a second. And you can see that it actually it, it lines up. It's all inspired by an artist named James Terrell, who deals with light. And I jumped inside a James Terrell art exhibit when I was a kid, and I was fascinated by it. I was like, how does this guy think of this stuff? He plays with light. So that, that was a very interesting thing. Another little interesting thing about this is there's a place to... Uh, this is where you put your hand in to open up the trunk on this car. It's a little recess, and that used to get full of grime. So if you reached up in there, the dirt went right under your fingernails. It was so irritating. And by putting these bars here, I thought that maybe it would help the airflow. Um, it's kind of an influence of Gordon Murray. He always talks about air and you know how to move it. And I did this almost, I did this more for aesthetics, but I, I literally thought like maybe the air would flow and I think it really helped, or maybe just the fact that the license plate isn't there, but now my little um, my little thing never gets grimy, which is uh, this totally kind of serendipitous. Um, I don't know if we looked at this, but uh, you can see the drift kit. When the top is down, I mean, the tolerances for this little thing, I mean, it just 
it fits so well in here. And I dabble in magic and comedy. Tissues, this is one of my greatest little inventions. It looks like a box of tissues. So if you left this on, on your car seat, it, it, it's just, there's no value here. Nobody is interested in this. But if you open it up, it's actually a box to put things. So I have my deck of cards and I have my scarf and my little bolo tie that, I, that I'll throw on. I don't want to drive with this stuff on. And uh, then it closes up and it's, to <laughs> it's totally protected. You want to comment on that, Nick? <laughs> it's just amazing, simply amazing. <laughs> and then it, it, it fits right in here. And the reason why it, it evolved in here is I just noticed that, oh wow, a tissue box fits perfectly in this in this bag that I have Velcro here. And if you, you look, the, the this has Velcro on it too, so I can put it on that thing and it won't slide around um, in, in my seat. And then there you go. everyone. I'm Ken Bond. I'm a film and television actor and a car enthusiast. I'm zipping up my M gloves because I'm about to show you all my little uh, Ken Bond inventions. My friends sometimes see these little things that I've invented and they'll call me up and they're like, hey, I, I made a Ken Bond invention. And I'm like, how can, if, isn't it, it's, it's your invention, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a Nick invention or it's a Leah invention. But um, I do a lot of things anyways. We'll, We'll get to the first one. I call it the drift kit. Whenever you go somewhere, you gotta have a lot of stuff and you gotta take it to your car and then you have to put it away. Well, my car has a very complicated trunk and this has evolved. Um, it's branded with, with our unofficial name, Bad BMW. And it's just like a little organizer um, for all your stuff. And it's, it's modular, meaning you can take off little sections on Velcro and uh, put them and it has a battery pack, it, it wheels. Usually I don't take it outside. I probably look like a child with his toys and a little wagon, uh, but the drift kit evolved to carry those big five gallon jugs of water. And I just found that, wow, it's faster if I leave my stuff in this thing and then, you know, grab it. That way it's I don't have to put handles. things in my pockets. And then it lifts up. And the, the kind of neat thing is the wheels lock in to these recesses in the trunk. It's kind of filthy in here, but this car has these recesses and it just locks in and it, it stays there perfectly. It's got a little battery pack, which I'm gonna plug in and uh, that's gonna power the car's ambient lighting system. And then this comes down because it's convertible. So now everything is there and you actually have some access to some stuff even when the convertible top is fully down. We'll take a look at that in a second. But if you go around to the front, you can see that the lights are on. So time to admit the truth. This car is kind of a joke to me. One of my girlfriends made fun of, she's like, why didn't you make a super lighted vanity mirror? So I had to make this. Anyways, this car, the reason I like it so much, it has a dual clutch and my Z has a SMG. So this is the silly car of the two. And you can see one of these little boxes so you can drive and it won't, won't move. And then this one, I have my little wallet in here and a few other things. And that just fits right into the, into the seat cushion of the BMW. It's made out of cardboard. Um, I put a little Pep Boy sticker on there. Actually, I put that sticker on there, so if anyone saw it, they wouldn't want to steal it. It just, it looks like this has no value. But if you if you just had that on the seat without the sticker, uh, a crackhead might think it's a, a, a tablet computer or something to break into your car to steal a worthless piece of cardboard. You can also shove it, shove it in there, and then just stick these guys right in there. So, let me clear that. Nick, you can hop in. This, we just left it here so because I, I, I want I want to just cover as many of these little things in the video. So this is a huge, a huge uh, mirror. One of my friends, you know, she, she's like these these mirrors are so like crappy can I can't I can't see anything so I made a big one for her and you can actually use it on the passenger side by hanging it on on the visor for for the passenger and there's uh, switches in the back you I don't know if you can really see that you can get that another time but you'll just have to trust me that there's switches I'll turn that off 
So I have a little Hot Wheels car here. This is Kit from the show Knight Rider. One of the features in Kit was that Kit could smoke out the windows of the car. So if someone was standing next to the car and they wanted to look in and see, you know, what's going on in there, they couldn't. The name of the car is Kit and it had active stealth. Well, I don't know if it was called active stealth, but that's, that's what I call it. So let's say- um, It's a cool name, by the way. Oh, thank you. So uh, one of the other nice things about this car, it has the camera system. So I like to put the camera system on when I, when I say I'm deploying the active stealth. And the, the genesis of also this is whenever I saw a car with a feature that my car didn't have, I always wanted to add it to my car. So the Rolls-Royce Phantoms have um, curtains. So I guess I didn't have to do this, but you'll, you'll, you'll get the effect. So obviously the front blocking that out is easy. I use the wind deflector to block out the... Um, oh, that's smart. Yeah, the uh, the back window, and then I have to hop out because the active stealth is actually I keep it. It fits in the seat back of the uh, you know the most cars have these pockets behind the seat, so they it just fits right back there. Got another fire truck that's so crazy. Got the little logo, and because it's a four series. Um, I, 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 I did four, four stripes on one and three on the other. Uh, BMW has this thing about being driver focused. So the, the, the active stealth with the four panels, they will, they will go onto the, um, onto the driver's side and you just kind of unfold it <laughs> and it's, it just fits perfectly in there. And of course we have a little, this this is actually magnetic and then you can just slide it over there. That is insane. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's another one for uh, Nick's side over here. Why don't you just lean back and I'll see if I can, it does, you can kind of. There we go. And then. <laughs> that is so cozy. You know, and with the ambient lighting and the, um, you know, with everything, it's just it's just really nice. I said the first time I used it is I had an audition and I got perfect parking right in front of the casting office. And I had to go from like a scientist to a young dad in a bathing suit of all things. So I had to like totally change. And um, now I use it, if I just park somewhere on the strip, I can put up, I can put it up on one side. If it's not too windy, you can actually put the top down and it stays in place. It might fall, but it might it might stay. So you can still have full privacy and have, you know, the kind of the convenience of the um, convertible situation, I guess. But you get the idea. Um, it's just a way to have a little bit of privacy um, in your car. And uh, yeah, so that, that that's active stealth. Uh, another thing that I did is I got this little, uh, I got this little thing from, um, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it's, it's just a little thing to hold your phone. It's, it's handy because it, no matter what kind of phone you have, it, it bends. So I put some Velcro here, but then I also put it on my steering wheel. And if I'm doing social media, I can just put my phone here and work right on the phone. And it just makes it super, super easy so I can be productive because I use my car as a mobile office and I think we all, like everyone uses their car sometimes I just don't feel like doing things in my house but you know having this ergonomic situation my phone is here I can be really really productive so that's another one of my little little inventions I don't know if that it's, it doesn't really count as an invention it's not as dramatic as the active stealth it's just really easy to pull this stuff down and uh, fold it up and if I don't feel like folding it, uh, putting it behind the seat pocket, I can just stick it right here um, between the, the seat and it just it fits perfect. So that comes in handy. And then I don't know if you want to twist to the back and see the back is completely organized as well. I have a little organizer in there. And I put some Hot Wheels cars in, in the back because usually it's just like water and bags and, and junk. 
I have a huge tea, a huge cup of tea when I leave my house. And by the time I get anywhere, it's, it's, it's cold. So I have this thing, um, Nick wanted to see it. Yeah. I, I told him I could heat my tea up. And he was like, what are you talking about? But I just keep it in this little pouch. It's, uh, it's, it's such an old school thing hmm. that you can put it into like a cup and it'll boil the water. So usually I have a huge teacup here. In fact, through the magic of editing, oh look, there's a teacup, and uh, I just plug it in. It just plugs right into the cigarette lighter. And, oh, that's so good. It's so piping hot. We can take a look at some of these switches. These switches actually control the ambient lighting. Um, I made this little switch box. This is uh, something that I built from scratch that I wanted to share with you. I know it doesn't look that good, but it's a little box with uh, three switches and. Um, when you turn on the switches, they light up. And uh, I don't know, I'm just really excited by this, that I made it from scratch. I drilled holes in this little box. I covered it up with uh, uh, black stickers and electrical tape. Basically because I bought something uh, to do this and it was too big. This is actually the housing that I bought. And it, it almost looks like the exact same size, but this is just too big. Um, where I needed to put the switches, uh, this housing. So I ended up making my own. And once it's installed, uh, all this work will never be seen. But yes, some of my, uh, some of my best work uh, with these. And the funniest part about this is, this is probably the crappiest thing I've ever made for my car. It's um, this little tray is the the thing that goes in the ashtray. And I I took a, um, like some, uh, a Hot Wheels, actually a Hot Wheels car came in here and I covered it with some electrical tape. And this is what I made to put my key. My car key fits in this little tray. And I know it's really crappy, but I was really frustrated with losing this key all the time. So I made this, now I made a new pocket and ironically, the switches that I made, they fit. Okay, here we go. They fit perfectly in there. So this is my new little invention. It looks like a little boat. And uh, this one controls these up here. I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell, but they're going on and off. But what's interesting about all the modifications that I've done is they actually didn't alter the car in any way. No tools were used on the car. Even for these switches and everything, no wires were actually spliced. Because this car is really well optioned, it has a cigarette lighter in the trunk. So I just ran a cigarette lighter from the into the trunk and that powers all these little accessories because when I first started doing this, it was under um, uh, the BMW scheduled maintenance program, and I didn't want to do anything where I, I screwed up the car and they're like, you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna fix it anymore because you messed it up. Uh, bad BMW is is like under the it's it's like with the blessing of BMW because you you really don't. In the old days, you, you, you kind of had to modify your cars to make them work right. But these days, modern cars, they're, they're pretty much perfect. And modifying them oftentimes will screw them up. Uh, I, I painted the wheels of my Z4 to uh, like a DTM gold color. The, and I thought that will never affect the car. And it totally made it uh, annoying a few years later when, when one of the rims got cracked and I had to replace it and then I had to match the paint and it was such a pain in the butt. And I, I wasn't in the mode of, of, of like being excited for the wheels of that car. That, that was like a project from years ago and it, it came back to haunt me and I was like, I really had to scratch my head because I try not to modify my car. And I just did a little bit and it, it just bit me right in the butt. You know, my theory is if you want a BMW M5, get the BMW M5 don't get a BMW 530i and try to turn it into an M5 and create a Frankenstein creation. I did that once. I did that too. Yeah. And then I went to the shop. I, I was I was young and I kind of had an argument with I wanted the car fixed and the guy was like I don't have time to fix it. And I and I was like 
you have to fix it. He's like, look, I don't want to work on your car anymore. And I had like a heart attack as a, as like an 18 year old. I was like, oh man. Um, so all my mods are to reduce anxiety. I want to articulate this whole concept of this car. But when I first saw this car, I hated it because it's a BMW 428i with a lot of BMW M's on them. There's an M here on the steering wheel. There's an M on the door sills. There's M on the brake calipers. Uh, they're just they're just all over the car. And I and I thought it, this car was an abomination from God. I, I it was it was in the sh middle of a show BMW showroom, and I and I started yelling at the salespeople. I was like, you should be ashamed of doing this. And they were like, no, Ken, this is from the factory. BMW is building them this way and my head just about exploded. I, I wasn't buying the car, I was helping a friend buy the car, and my friend had already bought two other cars from the same salesperson at the same dealership. So I just thought, you know what, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fight because I'm just gonna mess up the deal, let it go smoothly, and I wanted to find a silver uh, convertible with a red leather interior. I thought I wanted the, the six cylinder version. I couldn't find one that was well uh, optioned as this car. So I just said, hey, you know, if you ever sell that car, I, I'd be interested in it. So eventually I got the car and it has a four cylinder engine in it. Uh, this car also can be um, equipped as an M4 convertible. Some people say, you know, why didn't you get that? I wouldn't want an M4 with a folding metal roof. It's just it's just not really the best fit. And my other car is a Z4 with a straight six and a manual transmission. So so that checks the, the the sports car boxes. So I wanted this car to be like more of a more usable everyday. It's a four seater car. And then after owning it, this is its greatest trick here, Nick, if you can get in a, a shot of the um the the, the, the coolant gauge there. This car never has gotten to the middle. It's always, it's usually running cold, like it, it never gets even to that quarter tick. And even if you drive 100 miles an hour, it won't get to the center. It'll, it'll never stand up. And I've driven it on the freeway of uh, some spirited driving when you drive with a pack of cars and you, you know, people, people blast off for a little while. I've seen it just get past the quarter tick, but a few seconds later, it's a back running cool. So of all, I've had nine BMWs total, none of them have ever run cool. It's like an Alfa Romeo or Ferrari running cool. It, It's amazing that this car runs cool. Even if you, we have the AC on, we're just sitting here, but if you have the AC on max and it's 100 degrees outside, this car will run cool. So that makes me feel like I've won the lottery with this, with this car because um, who who knew? Who knew that was like that's how you get BMWs to run cool? You get the get the four cylinder engine. I thought BMW would never build a hardtop convertible, and then they they did. Uh, they only did it twice so far, and then this is one of them. And because it's a four cylinder, it's fun to ring it out. But how it won me over is a Mercedes C63 driver tried to race me, and I and I beat them because I'm I'm just quicker, and and this car has a good uh, good traction, and he caught up to me at the next light, and he's and he rolls his windows down, and he's like, what kind of motors in that car? And I said four cylinders, and I held up four fingers, and the look on his face was priceless. So I love racing faster cars. And then telling them I have a four cylinder and then look at their face. It is priceless. It's truly, a, it's, it's hilarious. And the last thing that it does is these seats. Oh, this is something fun. These seats have the air scarf in them. What's really nice about these air scarves is on a cold winter day or just on a, any cool day, you can hang your jacket on the passenger seat and turn it on. And then by the time you get somewhere, you put on your jacket and it's all nice and warm. And that's such a nice feeling. It's like a guilt, uh, like my guilty pleasure of, uh, of this car. And the whole vibe of, of the car being, you know, running cool, you know, the laid back nature of it, it, it being really comfortable and um, the, the warranty and then the running cool. It's just, it's a BMW ownership experience like I've never, I've never had. It's like, I, I can treat this car like a Honda Civic 
and uh, not have any anxiety about it. And that literally blows blows my mind. And I have a friend who's got a he's got like a M240, and he's like it runs hot. He's like it drives me insane. And I was like, I know I've been there. You know, I've been there and uh, done that. So. Um, you know, the, the way to get a cool running BMW is to get a four cylinder. And it gives me no, no pleasure to say this, but it's, it's, it's what happened to me. And I, and I've really been enjoying it. And I think that, I think that people, people need to hear, kind of hear that other, other uh, flip side of the coin and hear something. This is a good, uh, a good thing to end on the original BMW M3. One of the the first BMW M cars with the with the flared fenders. It's it's a car that's loved by so many automotive enthusiasts. It came out in '88 for North America. The 1988 and the 1989 M3, they came with four cylinder motors. A lot. I think everyone in the world forgets that the BMW M3 came with a the, the first one came with a four cylinder racing motor because four cylinders is lighter than uh, six cylinders. Now the 19, here's the part that'll blow your mind. The 1988 BMW 325 IS came with a straight six. So the lesser version came with the six cylinder and the M3 came with the four cylinder. And this is back in, you know, 1988 when 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 the, the it, it was really about the driving experience and it wasn't about marketing. These days, it's so much about marketing. They would never market an M car with fewer cylinders than its, you know, than than its regular uh, BMW siblings because it's just it's just unheard of uh, to to do it that way. But but back in the day, that that's what they did. The M3 had the four cylinder. The 325 IS had the six cylinder, and it just it just goes to show you that you know if you swallow the marketing pill it's very hard to get a car you like because you were you were, you were marketed but if you just um, you know throw the marketing out the window and you get the car that you want the car that fits you you can really enjoy the car when BMW made a hard top convertible I was like I want that car it's the most ridiculous goofy thing that they've ever done and I was like I, I want that ridiculous situation Somehow I stumbled into getting the four cylinder version and I was like, okay, you know, I changed my own oil So if I change it on the Z, it's a six cylinder oil change If I change it on this car, it's a four cylinder oil change um, You know, it's just like a little bit of variety So I wasn't totally against it, but I feel so lucky for getting for getting the efficient engine You know, put it this way, if I had a son or daughter and they had won like a scholarship to Berkeley And I was in a position where I could get them like a, a BMW 5 series and I wanted them just to do well in college, I would definitely get them the four cylinder version because I know they would not have any trouble with the car at all. <laughs> if I knew someone who was kind of a jerk and um, they were kind of like a macho jerk, I'd be like, yeah, get the M5 <laughs> because I know they're gonna have problems with it. And it gives me no pleasure to say this. So, 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 so what does this all mean? If you plan on buying your car and keeping it for a long, long, long time and, and driving it every day, get a regular BMW with maybe some M pieces that have fallen onto it. That was like a magical chime, but <laughs> that's a good idea. Uh, and the, the case, it, it gives me no pleasure to say this, but the case in point is you don't see a lot of old 1988 BMW M3s and M6s and M5s on the road, but you do see a lot of just old regular BMWs on the road. But if you want to lease, a, uh, if you plan on leasing a BMW and you don't drive cross country, I think the, the argument is hard to find why not to lease an M vehicle because you're leasing it, it's going to be covered under, you know, for all the repairs, it's like, yeah, you could lease it, you could drive it hard and enjoy it. So, um, you know, it's up to you, but uh, there you go. BMWs are the Guinness Book World Record Champion of Drifting. So if you if you really want to learn to drive, these cars are very, very hard to beat. I've been trying to leave BMWs for a long time and it's just, it's just uh, difficult. But anyways, I think we'll close out on this temperature gauge. So we've been chatting in the car, the AC has been running. Nick, if you want to get in there with the temperature game. It's, it's amazing. 
I was watching the Car Wow channel and they were drag racing Lamborghini Urises and both drivers mentioned how the Urus will hesitate as it goes off the line. So you have to account for that hesitation. I was at the traffic light next to a Urus and I had to get to the grocery store. So I decided to go for it. And this guy decided to go for it when I went for it and I was going a little early. And I got in front of him and then we ended up next to each other at the next light. And I said, I have four cylinders. I said, I only have four cylinders. He just said, well played and like cruised off. It was hilarious. He had the tint and the window half down so I could only see his eyes. Hey, look, it's the 850 CI prototype. I should pay attention to what's going on in the video. It's the 850 CI prototype. And then the 850 CI, this is exactly where I got the instructions. What is that dog doing with that cone? I guess he's on cone duty. Huh. Hey, who put this cone here? We're, we're done filming. We don't need the cone anymore. So, uh, I guess it's for safety. Now we gotta get rid of this cone. Okay.